Hi, my name is Isaac Goldman. I'm an undergraduate at the University of Minnesota, and my presentation is on developing basic stakeholder communication tools for Pennycrest. I worked on this project alongside Caleb Misik, and our goal was to help the supply chain team with developing commercial supply chains for Pennycrest. But why is Pennycrest's supply chain important? At the end of the day, for Pennycrest to be commercially successful, we need people supplying it and people demanding it. Growers won't grow it if they do not have people to sell it to. And creating this balance is a major focus of the supply chain team and absolutely essential for commercial success. And where does communication come into things? Why were we asked to develop a toolkit with stakeholder communication resources? A functioning balanced supply chain requires a multitude of stakeholders to be involved. Notably, among others, growers, consumers, and makers. And for the sake of this presentation, Makers are people who create products from a crop. And the first step in getting these people involved is convincing them why they sh want, should be involved and want to be involved. And this requires thought. It's not a one-size-fits-all pitch. We couldn't start off by developing posters and tools like that. We really need to understand who we were talking to so we could be most effective when communicating with them. For example, consumers, they don't care how Pennycrest is seeded, but growers do. And understanding that is important when creating a message for these stakeholders. So our project really had two phases. My presentation focuses exclusively on the first one, and that what that is or was researching and developing communication guidelines. We've created a document that details how to communicate about Pennycrest with different stakeholders, provides background information on them. And creating these guidelines required consider considerable research. We interviewed industry insiders with some experience and insight into how businesses may view Pennycrest and what considerations firms might have when selecting inputs. We also created and administered a consumer survey. We generated about 140 responses, which was a number that we were pretty content with, but there is some sample bias. In order to increase responses, we reached out to a couple of on-campus sustainability-oriented groups, and they helped us, but that meant that our sample is or was not perfectly representative of the actual population. We still though believe that the findings are pretty helpful. And then using the information and the recommendations from our communication guidelines, we've developed resources that target these different stakeholder groups. Caleb's presentation will be talking a little bit more about this, but unfortunately due to time, that's all I'm going to say about the media development. The communication guidelines are the absolute foundation of our toolkit. It's a summary of our research that's organized around different stakeholder groups. It goes through who these stakeholders are, what, what are the relevant benefits of Pennycrest for these stakeholders, what do these uh, stakeholders care about generally, are there any other considerations or things that would be good to know before communicating with these stakeholders, and then suggested talking points. Based on our research, what are the most important things to talk about with these stakeholders? And overall, this is meant as a summary of our research, and we can hopefully help people avoid doing research that we've already done, and this is also meant to help the supply chain team communicate more effectively with these stakeholder groups. I want to highlight a couple of insights and results from our research and kind of an example of how these guidelines work. I'll start off with consumers. We asked on our survey if people had any questions after reading a brief description of Pennycrest. Over 5% of the responses were along the lines of, this sounds really good, why aren't people growing it? That made us think, could people be viewing this lack of adoption as being indicative of Pennycrest's quality? And so under suggested talking points, we suggest mentioning that Pennycrest is still developing and crop adoption generally takes time, and that should solve that issue. On to makers. In our, in our interviews with industry insiders, we were hearing varying levels of concern over the negative optics of using a potential food source as a biopolymer. And while the level of concern did vary, it was something that we felt could steer some firms away from Pennycrest, so we wanted to come up with a solution. That was to really emphasize Pennycrest as a bonus crop. You're using a double cropping system and increasing your field's overall yield, and so you're not really using existing food as a plastic, you're using this bonus yield that you've never had before as the plastic. Just a couple of final thoughts. The, the communication guidelines are really something that are meant to be updated in the future as facts change, and the supply chain team has said that they intend to continue to use them and to add to them. And media development. Again, I did not have time to talk about that today, but Caleb's presentation does talk about it, and I'd be perfectly happy to talk about it at another point in time. Just reach out to me, and I'd be happy to set up a time to talk.
That's all the time I have for today. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the presentations.